Okay, so uh, this is now uh, the video about playing tune-up with the melody in the right hand and two-note voicings in the left hand. So when we're doing two-note voicings uh, in the left hand, uh, what I'm talking about using are the root of the chord and either the third or the seventh. Um, and you'll be alternating between the third and seventh, generally, uh, with good voice leading. So um, I have uh, created a PDF that gets you started with this. It has it written out uh, for the first uh, five bars, what the voicings would look like. Um, and then I encourage you to fill out the rest on your own, um, and uh, I'm happy to look at that. When you go to practice, after you've figured out what the voicings are, uh, when you go to actually practice it, don't look at the sheet or, or get away from looking at that sheet uh, as soon as you can, uh, because you want to not be reading the written out voicings, but rather looking at the melody and chord changes to the song like on a lead sheet because in real life that's what we will be reading. Um, so you'll always start when we're doing these two note voicings with either the third, with either the root and third or the root and seventh. Um, so with tune up, I decided to start with the root and seventh. And here's the reason. If I start with root and third, and I'll demonstrate that now. The reason I chose for this song not to do that uh, is because you'll notice that uh, we're ending each phrase with the third of the chord in the melody. And so if we're playing root and third in the left hand, then we're just not getting a lot of notes. We're, we're doubling the third of the chord and not having a seventh. Um, so I think with this song, it sounds better to start with root and seventh. So the root of E minor seven is E, the seventh is D. And then I'm going to play the melody in the right hand. So. And then I just keep voice leading it. And then here, we're no longer in the 2 5 1 whole step cycle with our left hand. Um, we're no longer doing two, five, one chords. We now have uh, the sixth chord of B flat major, which is G minor seven. So when we're not moving uh, in that two, five, one pattern, uh, when we're moving to a different kind of chord, we have a little more leeway sometimes about whether we are moving to root and third or root and seventh. Um, in this case, I thought it worked nicely to move upwards to the root and third for G minor 7, and then open up to root and 7th for the E minor 7. And then notice the left hand, because our bass note is just moving up a half step, that E minor the E is just moving up a half step to F7. Because of that, I thought it makes sense for our uh, voicing to move in a parallel motion. So instead of going from the root and seventh to the root and third, I went from the root and seventh and I held it parallel to root and seventh of F7. So this is the B flat major. 
And then again, because B flat is just moving down a half step to A for the A7, I decided to move it parallel. Uh, so we've got root and third on the B flat major to root and third on the A7. So um, that's it. And then the second time through, you take the second ending, um, which is just a 2 5 1 in D major. Uh, so I'm just going to play it. And, you know, again, with the left hand, you are free to, you don't have to play whole notes. In fact, it can be nice to put a little rhythm in there. Um, but you'll probably want to start out by just playing whole notes just to get the get comfortable with the voicings. But here's how you might do it. Um, a one, two, three, four. Um, so please uh, email me questions that you have about this, uh, and uh, again, use that PDF to work out the voicings, but then don't look at it uh, when you're working on the song, and certainly when you perform it for the video for your assignment, uh, don't be looking at the written out voicings, be looking at the lead sheet, or playing from memory. Okay. Good luck, everybody. Have fun with it.